Our love for you is ticking clock, Belzaka. Would you like to suck my cock, Belzaka? That's beautiful, man. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Getting Around to It. I am Zach Peterson, uh, your host, one of them at least, and the other host is with me right there, uh, Goodrich Gavars. I'm right here. Guilty as charged. <laughs> there he is. That's a fun thing I say. There it is. Uh, we uh, we have a podcast that I listen to right now where we make uh, comedians and other people watch movies that they have yet to see that they should have seen at some point. How would you describe these movies we make them see? Uh, movies in just the cultural zeitgeist and also things Ooh. you and me, Zach, in our, our worldview think people ha- should have seen. Yeah. Or even movies maybe we haven't seen but we know we're supposed to. Exactly. We've got a couple of those on the list. Uh, like, uh, that's a movie I'm supposed to see. Yeah. As a distinguished gentleman of culture, I'm supposed to see things. <laughs> and one thing, uh, if you don't, you should know this, but there's going to be spoilers. We're going to talk about the movies uh, as much as possible. And if you haven't seen them and we're going to ruin them for you, well, this is your one warning and... And shut up. Also, if you get that <laughs> mad about stuff, I don't care. Like, yeah. I literally couldn't give a shit Exactly. More. You're like, oh, I didn't know he died at the end of Breaking Bad. I never saw the show. Ooh. I know that's what happened. Who really? gives a fuck? Oh, fuck. Ooh. I watch it. I just don't know what's going on. Ooh. He dies. Who cares? <laughs> okay, it happens. Yeah, oh. there's just going to be spoilers all over the place. Yeah. Uh, I can hear a man hemming and hawn uh, on the old microphone. A uh, good friend of ours, a uh, comedian here in Chicago. A runs. guy who doesn't know that every drug deal story ends with someone dying. Like, he's never <laughs> ever seen <laughs> a drug deal in movie uh host of lottie's mike every tuesday at lottie's uh give it up for uh michael Timber. give it up for michael Timber. <laughs> let him hear it you guys i'll wait i'll wait for the applause yeah um first off i'd just like to say i didn't know that the name of the podcast was getting around to it i think that's a great name thank you i appreciate it name. uh second off i mean these people didn't sign up to have breaking bad room for <laughs> <laughs> who edits this again i don't care oh god it's sorry funny. about that i want you to know that i apologize for good riches behavior <laughs> I mean, it's still it's about the journey, not the destination. That's, That's how true I feel too. About yeah, it, you know. And uh, we made uh, Mike here watch the 1994 indie movie, <laughs> <laughs> Clerks. Yeah, you the one and only made me. Yeah, we tied you down because you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to. I hate service <laughs> industry movies. This is like a bag of work. Now, like, I'm surprised you haven't seen it because you're around my age, right? I mean, I'm 33. I'm 23. So oh he's fuck! You're not around your Do age. I come off as like a... no, Zach? What are you talking about? Really? <laughs> yeah, of course he's not around our age. He's Man, a young buck. I am real stupid, so it's yeah. no surprise it's I don't just tell things. So chill, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's like, the thing. Yeah. You feel like an, an aged chill dude, right? Yeah. yeah. No, but you're yeah, you're ten years past this. So when were you born? I was born ninety. So this came out in ninety four. Yeah, but four years so old. You might not even learn how to shit in the toilet yet. Yeah, and this is adult humor. I was a quick <laughs> for adults. <laughs> Movies after dark, buddy. Really? Boy. Um this was a, this was a Clerks is a time pe- it's a time it's a period film. It, it really is. So is. It's a time capsule yeah. movie for sure. It's for for what life was like back then. Yeah, the, it's, the it's good old nineteen nineties, a lot of feathered bangs. Mm-hmm. Too many. Yeah. Why I don't know who liked that and why. Uh, they I, look like children. Well, That's it also how, like, looks, children it looks sort of 80s, yeah. like the female style. Maybe looked, it's just the progression. They were in Jersey. The natural, they didn't get it. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, it was Jersey as fuck. Yeah, hence uh, two Italian main characters. Give it up for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Dante and Randall. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, Dante and his, his girlfriend. Oh, uh, Veronica. Uh, Veronica. Randall's, Randall's probably a wasp. Yeah, yeah, fucking with yeah. that cavalier Randall. attitude, yeah. that uh, on un- sense yeah. of ennui. That's mm-hmm. that's waspy stuff. So you, you you've obviously never seen this. Never and, saw it. Heard uh, about it. Have you, you seen other Kevin Smith movies? Not the ones that you should have, I guess. I so what you see? You see like Comic Book Men, the TV series. <laughs> <laughs> it's on after Breaking Bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I listened to the Smodcast. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I saw um, one of the Jay and Simon Bob's. How, how many are there? Ugh. Oh, man, I, I guess i got to look that I up. I mean, huh? I only know Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, which I think is the second one. Well, you would hope. Or right? uh, well, or the first of them. I don't even they know. Because got, they got striked in the first one, so they had to strike back. Absolutely. Yeah, they drew first strike or whatever. We have Clerks. Okay. Mall Rats. Uh-huh. Chasing Amy. Mm-hmm. Dogma. Seen Dogma. Okay. 
Uh, and then we have Clerks 2. And oh. then there's some jer- there's some like Jersey Girl and other things mixed in there. Yeah. And there's a Clerks 3 in the works. Oh, great. Yeah. Everyone, the free market's been asking for that one. I saw a... Uh... I saw Zach and Miri make a porno too. I don't I know. Think that's he had, I think Smith. he had a hand yeah. in it. I don't know. A porno hand in it? He had a porno oh, hand right. in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and he has Red State Cop Out. Cop Out. Uh, Who is that Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan. I seen that. I'll see anything Tracy Morgan. You know in. what? I, I think hope I saw that too. Good. That sucked. It was a that it's was a bad terrible. Movie. Maybe my love for Tracy Morgan just transcends any badness. I think I think I came in the same boat. I was like, I love Bruce Willis. I love mm-hmm. Tracy Morgan. Mm-hmm. I hate this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. The first time I saw a preview for Cop, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, Kevin Smith throws something with Tracy Morgan in it? That's yeah. going to be fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. And it could it not have been further from that. So yeah, yeah. just as like an outsider's perspective, because I don't really know this dude too mm-hmm. much, it seems like everyone loves him, but then can on the other hand admit, oh, yeah, it sucks, but I love it. I don't know if I love him. I think he kind of sucks now. Mm. Uh, I think most people, I feel like, aren't into him unless they're like, Total dweebs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. I can make a generalization. Well, that's I, I, probably part of the reason I, I've stayed away from yeah. seeing all these movies. I think the other one is like, you know how people complain like, well, I can't read a 400-page book. Yeah. This, he's got a big universe and all these films tied together. It just seemed like work to like get on board uh, on yeah. the same page as everyone else. Totally. So I was like, I'll sit it out. Yeah. No, I, I started this universe when I was a teenager, so yeah. I didn't have shit else to do. Yeah, exactly. So why don't I watch this movie? I, I have a very fond... Uh, I have a very fond feeling towards Kevin Smith uh, because my adolescence was so defined by his movies. Yeah. Like, watched Clerks. First time I saw Mallrats, I lost my goddamn mind. Oh, I yeah, thought that totally. was the funniest movie. And I look back on it now, it's like, oh, you know who'd find this funny? Fucking 16 year olds, 17 year olds. Exactly yeah, sure. who I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm sure the people that are really into his stuff are 16 and 17 year olds. Me being a 33 year old dipshit, uh, not so much into it not anymore. Not anymore. Definitely you know? not, yeah. Uh, but I mean, looking back on Clerks now, like, it really represented like this sort of push for like the new like indie comedies, indie movies. Because before that, there really wasn't any. The w- uh, I'm seeing the way I'm thinking about it. Um, I just recently watched again the documentary Hype, mm-hmm. which is about uh, grunge Seattle and the whole Seattle scene and the big grab for like once Nirvana hit, everyone yeah. was like, "Give me anything you got." This came out the exact same time. Is that on Netflix? It's not. It's on YouTube. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's choice. I love it. Yeah, it's so I, I, I want to watch it. But I feel like. Uh, that is the same mentality of like this was, uh, what the this like spoke to a generation that corporate America yeah. hadn't reached, hadn't figured out how to talk to, uh, this whole generation of people. You couldn't talk to them, corporate America. Don't yeah. even try. Exactly. Don't yeah. even try. Get out of my buzz bin. My buzz bin. Exactly. What's but a this buzz was bin? like these. Uh, exact. What's buzz bin? That was. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was like for MTV. That's where, like we're in the buzz bin. Where you gonna see Dinosaur Jr. and President of the United States of America? Yeah, like this you know, is like, rock. You know, hair metal's dying out. So Isn't this is that the nice of them to like have a segment where they they're fully acknowledging, hey, this is the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. like it's like very tongue in cheek. Like we know we play garbage. It, that, here's here's what you should like if you're yeah. cool. Yeah, I was way into the buzz bin. 120 minutes. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is like the Matt Pinfield of movies. Is what this <laughs> is here. Uh, I do you know Matt Pinfield? Yeah. Yes, you know that guy. Yeah. Any ba- any bald guy who knows a lot of facts, you know him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so th- I feel like this was the first movie that spoke to that generation of mid twenties mm-hmm. dudes who like and and people who were just like, oh, I don't know what to do with my life, man. And there were the movies, slackers. there were movies uh, that were geared towards that audience. Mm-hmm. Like you look at singles, and then you look at reality yeah. bites, totally, which are both like, hey, we're grunge, we're Gen X, don't give a shit, yeah, you know, totally. And then, but at the same time, it's fucking Ben Stiller yeah. and Ethan Hawke, you know, like yeah, like cool the, dudes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're fucking Hella great. Chill. Uh, I love Ben Stiller. <laughs> I just watched The Cable Guy the other day, and, you know, he wrote that. Like, mm-hmm. he's a yeah. fucking badass. Yeah. Uh, but it, that was that was their demo, – they're, like, going towards that demographic real hard. And this sort of uh, spoke to them uh, just because it was independent. But this is – this movie, like, within the plot is mostly just a collection of clever conversations. Yep, pretty much. Cleverly scripted, cleverly scripted yeah, conversation. That was the big thing that we come off about. scripted as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't know if I'm supposed to dive into the movie. Go right for now, it. No, go for but it. Yeah, I mean, they might as well have had the scripts in their hands. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got it. 
I'm like Dante, the main character. I apologize too easily to take blame. Where it's like, if I was yeah. in a movie, I'd probably be just as shitty. And these, like you said, they're independent. This is their first go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I but, think. I mean, it was fucking rough, man. <laughs> Objective, like, it was fucking rough. Yeah, totally. But, you know, that being said, I, you know. Well, there's uh okay, let's go through over the plot, what actually happened in this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh Dante, the main character, uh played by a Brian O'Hallahan. Oh, I don't know. This is gonna sound like a joke, but mm -hmm. I'm being I'm being for real. He looks like a young Joe Montaigne. <laughs> he does. <laughs> yes. Whenever you say that name, it sounds like a joke, but yeah. he does look like mm -hmm. a young mm -hmm. Yeah. He has a very weird look to him, for sure. Yeah, and he didn't, like, in the, all the people in this movie, the actors in this movie, I mean, there's Dante and Randall and everyone else. They aren't in anything besides for Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes, Jason yeah. and Bob, who are mainly in the, you know, the what they call the New Jersey trilogy, but there's, like, nine movies. Yeah. So I, don't... <laughs> I mean, because they all saw them in Clerks and were like, no, you shouldn't act in other things. You're <laughs> yeah. bad at this. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Well, Dante woke up and he was like, oh, he has to go into work. And he goes into work and, you know, things are going He woke up in poorly. the closet, too. Yeah. They yeah. never addressed that. No, not at all. He woke, just woke up, up half in the closet, yeah. half out. I mean, you're just to assume he had a fucked up night, right? Drinking and shit. Yeah, I, I assume so. He closed the shop. Closed the shop. Out. Yeah. He's not going to sleep in corporate America's bed. No, no yeah, absolutely no. not. He's the kind of guy who rips that tag off the mattress, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't give a rip. Uh, and then most of the movie after that, just for a while, is conversations mm -hmm. uh you know you're introduced to characters you're sort of shown who they are and then <laughs> there's not much of a plot i mean the no. guy there's a lot of things he wants to do during the day he's waiting for his boss to come in they don't mm -hmm. he just it's just the court it's just one day in a convenience store and mm -hmm. this day happens to have a few things happen but yeah. basically it's just vignettes of day what one day in a convenience and this is apparently where kevin smith worked at Ah. So he he shot it at his job. So I'm sure all these customers, everything. I know I was watching it, going, "Oh man, I've totally thought it because I've worked in like service industry jobs forever. Mm -hmm. I've totally thought about like, man, if I had it, if I was going to write a movie about this, these are the fucking jerk off characters I would yeah. have come. All the customer assholes, doesn't I would that, characterize all of them. Doesn't that just remind you of like every time you go home and like uh, yes. people you see your friends and family are like. You should write about this. Yeah. <laughs> when Kevin Smith actually was like, maybe I should. Yeah, totally. Like them writing into people and being like, oh, you know Alyssa Jones. I'm Rick Darris. Yeah. Like that reminds me of just going back to Fuck Omaha yeah. and being in Olivers or bars. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, like that girl is a girl that my best friend in sophomore year of high school hooked up with and yeah. he, she hated him and blah 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 and it's like oh and his yeah. car got stolen yeah. like no <laughs> and, like, it's just yep. like holy fuck this weird web of you know people that come and go in your life and, and, and you just don't give a shit the whole time no <laughs> uh except these people never left it they're still living in it uh in this world at least yeah, you you guys laughed when I said I won seventy bucks shooting dice over my buddy's house on Thanksgiving break. <laughs> totally. Now, yeah. uh, I currently don't work in the service industry. Goodrich, you just did. Uh, you stopped. I did a stint of seven years, yeah. so I was like, I'm yeah. through with this because you, you served your sentence. I did my time. I feel like I, I do a lot for this country. Uh, yeah. Working yeah. In the serv on the front lines of the service industry. Now, where did you work in your service industry? Until uh, when intelligence, so. intelligence, oh, coffee I'll get loaded. Yeah. Uh, is where I worked at. So you're a barista. I was a barista of at the one of the snootiest places you can make coffee. Gross. That's pretty and rough, man. Yeah, if, if you guys are listening, you don't know anything about that. That's like, uh, I mean, that's that's like if people who buy coffee at Starbucks went and got a PhD in coffee. Yeah. Mm. Then well, the go. thing is, is even people think the customers will be the worst, but really, it's the fact that they have a job where they give you. You make coffee, but then they're like, hey, here's all the world's knowledge about coffee, but you have to be nice to people. Yeah. So yeah. people are going to disregard the knowledge that we've paid you to know, mm -hmm. and then for somehow you have to translate that into uh, speak for the layman and tell them that they're idiots, but don't be mean to them. And you're like, yeah. oh, how do I do that? And it turns out it's not easy. No. And it's, most people yeah. are really shitty at it, and that's why everyone's like, oh, I think people there are assholes. It's like, well, they're kind of designed to be assholes, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so it takes years to like figure out how to be a balance, and then eventually you're just like, "Hey, I don't give a fuck." This is so and like just like based off of what I know about customers, the the type of people you would be serving then, 
I mean, when you go to get coffee, there's like people who middle of the day are relaxing, but like that morning mm-hmm. rush has to just be missed. Oh yeah, any any time that you're, especially it takes longer there anyway. So oh, people yeah. are already like, "What the fuck? Come I'm on!" I'm trying to get to fucking work. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we're getting in. The, we're in their way. This was in Chicago. Yeah, the one in downtown, Ooh, and then one in Lakeview. That's View. probably the worst one. Yeah, it's it's actually it's easier downtown because it's all regulars, mm. so they know what to expect. You know what they're drinking. It's yeah, actually, okay. once you get the rhythm, it's pretty sweet. The weekends is the brutal one. Sure. Because it's tourists who are like, I want, uh, do you guys have a blender? Can you put shit in a blender with, like, fudge cream and stuff? And you're like, yeah. nah. you All know, this isn't Wisconsinites. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's not really our, our thing. Uh, sorry. And they just get mad at you. And you're like, I don't care. You can go. Like, there's a line at the door. <laughs> we can go without your money. I literally don't give a fuck. Oh, like, <laughs> like, they get, they're like, well, if you don't have what I want, I'm going to take my business elsewhere. You're like, yeah, fucking go. I don't care. Starbucks yeah. is right there. They're everywhere. Go for it. It's for you. Uh, Timlin, do you work currently in service? Currently? Currently and in the past. Yeah. Both. Yeah, man. I uh You're a meat man. I'm a meat man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a meat man. I'm a little baby meat man. <laughs> um Yeah, I uh I worked the first job I ever had was at a golf course doing maintenance. Ooh. With all my friends. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a little caddyshack. It, it was fucking time. awesome. <laughs> to be honest with you, we would just hang out, cut grass, and fucking <laughs> get in trouble, you know? Yeah, totally. That was fun as fuck. And then I uh, I got a job from a family friend at a butcher shop in Ohio, uh, Cthulhu Prime Meats. You can order online. <laughs> They're great people. Mm-hmm. I loved them. But yeah, it was, I mean, it's fucking rough. People get, people get real uppity about their meat? People get real uppity about the price because it's in a small town where, you know, it, like it was literally right next to a super chain store, you know, yeah. so mm-hmm. you could like go across the street and get the same thing way cheaper. Did did Was the meat shop there first and then the chain opened across the street? Or how did that play out? I think or are they the, both old? The meat shop was at a location originally before all that shit came to town mm-hmm. and then moved to compete, you know, with the other places. But yeah. Like, uh, we served prime meat, which is a better quality, so th- hence the price thing, but it's mm-hmm. hard to explain that totally. to, you know, All they Joe see is the, the bottom line, yeah. who just wants to get a fucking steak, yeah. and, you know. And he thinks, for some reason, you're the dude uh, behind yeah. the counter that yeah. controls that. I did you it. You don't. I did it, yeah. <laughs> and now you're I like, work yo, I'm at... cutting this shit, dude. I have no control over it. Yeah. Now I work at a butcher shop in Chicago, and I gotta say, I never thought I'd say this, I miss the old lady clientele. Yeah, because yeah. that's who floats your business in a small town is like sixty year old women, totally. Who uh, fucking hipsters in Wicker Park aren't making pot roasts? No, <laughs> no. that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Do not. you know what I mean? So yeah. like, uh, it's just a different. There here is a lot easier, I guess, because no one really knows anything. They just want to get some sausage after work. Yeah. yeah. But like back there, God, they would haggle you on price. <laughs> they would yeah, dude, they would a... be offended that you were young. It was <laughs> Do you know really? what I mean? Like what yeah, do you know yeah. about yeah. fucking pot roast? I've been making it since my husband was in the fucking war. <laughs> yeah. But no, like you don't don't tell me what fucking English chuck I should get to you know. Yeah, totally. And it's meat's like, a battlefield though. Meat, meat is, is a, a battlefield. battlefield. <laughs> 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 like yeah, I don't I don't know. I never thought I'd miss him, but I do. I do. Mm. Mrs. Renicki, if you're listening, you put me through hell, but Mrs. I love you Renicki. for it. <laughs> oh, Renicki. And that's the kind of thing that Kevin Smith wrote about in Clerks. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I should say again, a lot of the friends from the golf course also then transferred to the meat shop. So it wasn't bad. I always had yeah. I always had comrades yeah. in the fight. You know? Totally, yeah. Yeah. I, I worked at a video game store. I managed a video game store for about three years. Uh, Manager material. Oh, you better fucking believe How it. How fast you make the jump? Uh, I got hired as it. God damn. Uh, yeah. That's what, that's you know what, what that means? Everyone on the, on the bottom rung didn't respect you. No. <laughs> right away. They were better like, respect fucking, my degree in history. Who's this fucking guy <laughs> rolling like he knows about this GameStop or whatever the fuck it was? It was a local channel. It was called Gamers in Omaha. Now, Zach, I understand you also have a degree in communication. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you want to tell us about that? Or? No, I don't. But I was uh, sure. Uh, oh, no. Sure. Okay. Uh, but but the the clientele that comes into a, a, a video game store, uh, also a vintage video game store where you're selling Nintendo, Atari, yeah, uh, Super Nintendo, 
are the worst fucking people in the world. Uh, a, they're nerds. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they're like they're the type of nerds that even nerds hate, where they're know it all, just like fucking. See, I thought it'd be fun. Like if I uh, do, I mean, you're not sitting around playing video games. You're dealing with people on the autism spectrum, like all the time, and like bitching about like how faded the cover is to a video game from exactly. 1989. Oh boy, and the price they're in. We'd have a dude that comes in. We called the collector. Oh he he looked. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like uh, the bone collector. Like <laughs> fuck, I can't think of his name. Uh, who's the guy who plays uh, the sportscaster and anchorman that goes ho oh, whammy? Uh, like, oh man, what's yeah, his I fucking name? It. Dave oh, Keckner. Dave yeah, Keckner. Dave Keckner. Yeah, he looked like Dave Keckner. Uh, Champ uh, is the guy. Yeah. In, the, in the movie. Yeah, but if he was like just a straight laced Christian, uh, and he would wear like this like uh, brown suit and come in. Uh, or that was the character from <laughs> I forget, uh, but like he he would always dress up, uh, and he would like ask to see Nintendo games, and he would pick at the sides, he would rub his thumb up and down, make sure there was no bubbles in it, and then make sure that it was perfect on b- all the things, and then he'd look at it for about five minutes, and this like either say yes or no, and then he, after you rung him up because he spent probably about forty five minutes to an, an hour looking for the fucking perfect copy of Bubble Bobble. Oh my god! Like he would give you a flyer uh, after he rang him up and it was about how you need to find Jesus and then he walked out. Doesn't that Jesus scare wow. you? Not not necessarily the Jesus flyer because all you have to do is throw away a piece of paper. But yeah. like, mm. doesn't it scare you how you're not aware of the things you're becoming interested in? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> this guy didn't plan on being the guy that, that searched for bubbles on Nintendo games. No. It just had life. Yeah, just how does he? How do you get there? I don't know, and I'm I'm, I'm afraid of that stuff. I think about that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we well, think there's probably a community where he feels like he belongs in some sense, like the gaming community, the retro video game community. That like, oh, I'm respected because my fucking video games don't have a goddamn bubble Insane. underneath mm-hmm. the sticker, and like he he's just so inundated in that that he can't see the rest of I reality. Think so many people live on the brink. Like, I think so many people are one trigger away from mm. a snap. Oh, yeah. Oh, I could see. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not saying that badly because I'm including myself in that. Mm-hmm. But, like, the, it scares me the, sh- the shit you could fucking get interested in. Like, I had a mm-hmm. neighbor back in Ohio who, like, what, he was very, very concerned with the quality of his hose. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand yeah, totally. what what yeah. you have to think? And what would he, so would he bitch to you about the quality of said hose, or like how would you know that he was into hose? He was checking it every day. <laughs> <laughs> he would roll it out. You know, it's just fucking scary to me. Okay, well, my question is: Do you feel like the customers and clerks weren't weird and crazy enough? Mm. I feel like they all had a. They were all like almost easy, so easy to categorize. Yeah, yeah. in a certain way. That I guess it, that goes with your first attempt at writing anything. Like, that's if you true, look yeah. back at your your first like bits or anything like that, it's always it's so heavy handed. Yes, totally. You have like yeah. premise and like mm-hmm. in, intention is so transparent. Some, yeah. Sometimes I'll still do that where it's like they get the premise, cut it, yeah, cut yeah. it in half, exactly. Like Fold where they're it. they're just it's so much exposition of like mm-hmm. why is this guy doing the egg? Oh well, I know everything about this guidance counselor. Yeah. It's like wh- <sighs> why are you telling me everything right now? Yeah, every this single is how custom- no one talks. <laughs> Every single customer. Yeah, no one talks like they do in that <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah, no all. one talks like that. Every single customer came in at the right time and had the specific knowledge base to address mm-hmm. what was going on. It's almost like that scene in Wayne's World where uh, oh, they're God. having Mr. Big and uh, Chris Farley's the security guard for some reason knows <laughs> his entire trajectory. So and they're like, oh, you sure do know a lot about for being a security guard. <laughs> like, that's this whole movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rick, Dante was in that whole movie. Didn't. Didn't go on to stardom. No. Farley was in Wayne's World for a minute. A minute and a half tops. Um, oh, man. But, yeah, the way, Zach, you mentioned, I think, during the movie, it sounds like a mess. It's like a message board. Yeah. Uh, like, come to life, basically. Yeah. Before, this was before message boards existed, but this were, like, the nerd conversations. So he's like, well, I got to have, you know, a, a love interest. I got to have a romance story. But also, I want to have a way to talk about Star Wars, the way me yeah. and my friends yeah. talk about Star Wars. Exactly. We have fun talking about Star the, Wars. Like, the real thing that moved the plot along, I guess, or the thing that, like, uh, I was like, okay, now things are going to start to happen. When mm-hmm. the boss called and said, 
or someone. I don't think it was the bus because he wasn't talking. I don't know who yeah, called. It was somebody else. Somebody else. But yeah, like there's <laughs> like his partner or some shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he called and said he's not going to be back till Tuesday. Yeah. And then after <laughs> that, it was like till Tuesday. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That was the real like plot mover for me. Yeah. But also it's funny. Like he's so obsessed with this. Uh, it it they feel so much older because they're so obsessed with this. It's like a high school relationship, basically. Yeah, yeah. That they're still obsessed with, and all of this matters so much. And looking, I'm just like, D- this woman cheated on you like 14 times. Let it go. And in Three high years school. ago. And in, and high, school. in high school. Yeah. Fucking let it go. Who cares? Like another thing too. I don't know because you got like, you, like you said, you know, you saw it when you were a teenager. Mm-hmm. But like I watch now and. Randall, I could believe, but I looked at Dante and I was like, "This cat's thirty-five, right?" Yeah, no, she he had... looks so old. He looks so mm. old. They said they're twenty-two. But in at the, movie. the but I, I, that happens in other movies where I watch them and be like, "In nineteen ninety-four, did this guy pass for twenty-two? Does this make sense?" Or I dude? remember thinking that when I was a kid. Okay, <laughs> the nineties yeah. aged you, man. Yeah, it's yeah. true, dude. Yeah, the Clinton administration. Oh boy. Oh god. Too much yeah. time in the buzz bin, dude. It's hard living. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard living, man. Also, okay, so should we talk about Jay and Silent Bob? Yeah. Oh, I think the uh, the tertiary characters that are off to the side there they were the best characters they totally. had the most character because they and yeah. they also they didn't outstay their welcome because they were on the screen for four seconds yeah. <laughs> that's probably what it is everyone else had like a, a long montage or a monologue that was like five minutes long of just talking heads mm-hmm. yeah. at each other oh, the best guy that come that came in was just for a second was fucking Olaf singing Berserker right yeah like his weird Russian friend that's in a metal band see I yeah. like the the guy at the beginning the gum salesman. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I was like, he should be the main character. What yeah. an interesting fucking guy that is, right? Yeah, He's what a, a good gum scam. salesman, right? Yeah. But his ho- what he does is go to convenience stores, <laughs> wait, buys a coffee, uh-huh. waits till someone buys cigarettes, and gives him this big elaborate fucking ruse of a scheme, mm-hmm. just so he can sell him a pack of gum, I'm gonna hand t- to hand, right? I'm gonna tell you right now, Chulies. I don't think they're making money off that. I think it's a bad investment on their part. Because yeah. they can't be moving as much gun, gum as his fucking salary is. Wouldn't he sell Absolutely. to the store and wholesale? This guy's out there on the streets. Yeah, <laughs> right? That's what happened in the 90s. You had to move product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could just put it up on Amazon and hope people pushed it. Yeah, that dude was interesting as fuck. Yeah. And also, it's very, very... For, not forgiving, I don't know the word, but it's under understanding where that everyone around that convenience store was just like... Oh, yeah, that's Bob. He doesn't talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one was like, hey, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Say a word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. And then there's Snowball, that guy. Uh-huh. That's- who is who's Scott Mosier, the um, producer and one of the guys who, who works on all the at Kevin Smith movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, he just walks around going, that's beautiful, man. Yeah. Like, just weird one-note yeah. character choice. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, it, and, yeah, Jane Silent and Bob, obviously, the... Uh, I don't know. Like you, th- God, it's-, it's so Jay is so bad at acting. He is. He's so alarmingly horrible. There's that. There's that scene <laughs> where uh, where he's like inviting him to go out at the end of the movie. Yeah. And like there's just parts where I, like you don't think that his lines are like, wait, I fucked up. Uh, never mind. It's like no, you just you didn't just, know your just, lines. Real he just didn't out. know his lines, and they were just like, all right, that's your take. Like we can do that again. Yeah. And oh, it. it it's bad, but they're they're <laughs> fucking funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're... well, I've so I've watched. Uh, I think I got the first DVD set of Kevin Smith does these like talk these story shows where he'll go to like a college and he'll take questions and he has these prepackaged stories that he tells. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there were some of them were pretty interesting, but he talks about how Jason Mewes, he was just like that crazy kid in high school uh, who you're like, this is the most fascinating guy. He's so reckless. The same type of guy who would just, you know, just go and like put his cock on all the library books. You're like, I love this guy. He's yeah, a party. Yeah. Let's, you know, if I ever make a movie, I'm putting him in there. And then you put that guy in a movie and you're like, <laughs> it's like having your funny guy at work go do stand up and he's like, oh, you're, this is hard. This you can't, is, just, yeah. you yeah. can't just be a jerk off around your buddies and do it. Oh, man, I fucking forgot about this. I think another reason I didn't get into these movies, in one of the Jay and Silent Bobs, I don't know which one, there's the fuck song. Does that ring a bell to anybody? I don't even no. know. What's the fuck song? I think it's literally, I, this is, if this is wrong and you're listening, I'm so sorry. I think I know what you're talking about. Motherfuck, I, motherfuck, mo- yeah, fuck, fuck. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's just basically Jay saying fuck. Noich, noich, noich. Like, fuck, uh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> I think it's in mall rats. Yeah, it's but, in mall rats. Whatever, yeah. however old I was, like, uh, you know, a little bit after, whatever that was, when that came out, 
kids who didn't swear at my school would do the song. And then if they, so then like uh, as like an insurance, if they got in trouble, they could be like, it's from a movie. And mm. me and my friends, you know, I mean, we're fucking a rough bunch. We're yeah, rowdy. we're not fucking nerds. We're not fucking nerds. We're out there <laughs> swearing every day. And we're Throwing like, dice. Like, like you're disrespecting the arts when right? you do that. So yeah. Totally. That, yeah, that also sounded like a, like I was trying to make a joke. But in, in all honesty, I was like, this is stupid. Yeah. If any jerk off can use it as a guy. Yeah. yeah just no. swear. Why do you have to sing a song? <laughs> <laughs> that's, such, that's such a great tip. I would have gotten mad about that stuff too when I was in high school. Yeah, you know, it's funny how. how no, this was even like younger. I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. Swearing from an early age. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Did, now, did you ever hang out outside of gas station? Because I spent a lot of time outside of gas stations. You know what? My friends lived like where my like in front of a gas station. My, that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty hard station. up in Youngstown, dude. <laughs> I actually had a friend that lived in the back of a gas station with with his family. What? Did yeah. they own it? Yeah. Okay. Then. It was a, it was a truck stop, a Stuckey's in Little Sioux, Iowa. What is this friend of yours? Where did, you, did he go to school with him or what? Yeah, he went, like he, he just you know he they had a house that was attached to the gas station in the back. You know they had dogs and a, a daughter. You know. And, yeah. <laughs> And, you know, and it would be fucking awesome because I'd spend the night there. We'd watch a movie, and then uh, his dad would like, oh, go out there and, you know, grab yourself something to eat. And we'd just, like, grab candy yeah, bars that's the and make a the the world. Make a suicide on the fucking What I'm thinking drinks. of is how you could probably get some spank mags. I didn't even think about that. Dude, I, dude if you, you grow think? up at a truck stop, I mean, you learn yeah. some shit early. Oh, sure. absolutely. Dude, yeah. I was probably, like, eight or nine, so, like, I wasn't even thinking about again, that. Well, okay, again. Nerd alert. I was thinking about <laughs> spank mags from day one out the get. Oh, well, my mistake. I'm very sorry. To, but to answer your question, my, like where every kid in my neighborhood kind of lived was like there was a Sammy's Quick Stop, which is the same thing in this movie. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. one of those, a Burger King, a Dairy Queen, an Arby's. Yeah. And a basketball court. So, like, I had oh. it fucking made growing up. Yeah. We hung out all over around there. Did you ever wait outside of a gas station and ask people to buy you cigarettes or alcohol? No, we we knew enough older brothers and uh, all that shit. We we had that hookup from an early age, yeah. Yeah, most of my high school was waiting for someone to buy me alcohol. I never had that stranger thing. No? That, well, you grew up like in the city, city yeah. of Omaha, so that's probably more common. Yeah, I, Small I, town, it's all know. who you know, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Rich, did you ever, like, I don't know if you drank a lot, like, growing up or no, smoked or anything. No, I, I never did any of that. And also, I never had a way to get anywhere because mm-hmm. I didn't know how to ride a bike. Still don't. Uh, I choice at a certain age. At a certain age, you're like, well, fuck it then. At a certain, well, like me with Kevin Smith. Yeah, same type of thing. No, when I was a kid, uh, I was learning how to ride a bike, and then I was doing donuts in the backyard. I was kind of learning, and my training wheels just got taken off. Yeah, and then my sister got in my way, and I turned real fast, and I smashed my face into the cement. And fucked up my face real bad, and I was oh, like, shit. "Fuck bikes." I was a very, I was like, I was <laughs> yeah. never a kid who was like a daredevil. I was like, "Well, this could hurt a lot." I don't think so. <laughs> so I was just like, "Well, I'm never gonna ride a bike again." Wow. And then I just never learned, and it was just like, "Fuck it, I don't care." Uh, I tried to learn when I was 21. I was horrible at it. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a certain age where you can't. You can't learn stuff anymore. Exactly. Like, stuff like that. I grew up playing hockey, and whenever I would see people who tried to learn how to skate when they were 25, yeah. you could just tell from a mile away. It's oh, frustrating you don't, to do you don't, shit you're you bad can't, at. You can't learn that. I tried to now learn that your guitar body's... at like 15, and I was already at yeah. that age where I was like, well, if I'm not good, I'm not good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do this shit. Yeah. And it's very hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just seemed like study, more studying. And I was mm-hmm. like, I, I, I have Absolutely. Time for this shit. So I couldn't, because I didn't have a bike, I didn't have older brothers or sisters to drive me around. Sure. I didn't get to drive around the city of Fort Wayne until my best friend turned 16 and he got a car. Nice. And then he could drive me around. He's a little older. So. Yeah. Uh, then we would just go hang out at the mall, though. Yeah. Ooh, you were one of those? I mean, we had, I don't know. It wasn't my choice. Like, we go to the mall just to fuck around because there's nothing to do. We're in Nebraska. Exactly. There's nothing to do. I I, I have always hated malls, hate the smell of the mall, hate the sight of the mall. Dude, fucking Crest Punk Timlin. As soon as I go, (laughs) not even. Don't get me near a Nordstrom. As soon as I go into a mall, like, I could never imagine going to a mall without an objective. It's pretty rough, to tell you the truth. I don't, I don't look back at the But that's not to say, like, uh, we didn't just kill time. At other places, yeah. you know what I mean. But uh, the the choice of the place was not the mall. I hate the mall. Yeah, but I mean, also, I guess what in my mind, like, why would you go hang out in front of a gas station? Like, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, that's the alternative. You They're get, both terrible. You get mm-hmm. to meet the fucking crazy old alcoholics who you go drink at their house, and they're fucking just yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, like yeah. I didn't bad have that, that necessity. So 
I think the thing that resonates with so many people about this movie is there is a time in everyone's fucking life where you're just killing time. Yeah, totally. You're just yeah, killing time. You don't have time. shit to do. You don't have shit to do. You don't know. You wouldn't even know where to start as far as shit to do is concerned. Yeah. <laughs> so but would it be when you're 22 like these guys? Yeah. Uh, the, I was already here trying to do uh, this shit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there was a point in my life where I had two friends that worked at the same subway. And when they worked at the subway together, everyone would go up to that subway and just hang out. How old are you this time? Probably about 22, 23. Whoa. Yeah. Well, I was in fucking Omaha, dude. I guess that's true. I guess because I, I moved to uh, Chicago to go to college, and I've been in Chicago ever since, so it's like... I just think about, like, your whole friend group, like, hanging out at the subway, and then going somewhere else, like, maybe, let's say, like, a party, Yeah. and then all you guys walk in together, and someone's like, someone bring Subway? Yeah. <laughs> the smell just <laughs> travels. No, just how we smell. Oh, we, were, we were just a bunch of punk rock kids and, like, a lot of straight-edge dudes, and, yeah. you know, that's where we'd meet up. Like, oh, Aaron yeah. gets off at work it's at, like, that fucking killing time eight, thing. so let's mm-hmm. fucking meet at six and just hang out. And, you know, it was like, every sub costs the price of a veggie sub. Yeah. Because yeah. it was the che- cheapest sub. That's before, like, totally. like uh, that's before cool. cars and all that stuff, before, like, you know, anywhere to really go, my friends would hang out for hours at the Arby's. And they'd yeah. be like, guys, we got to do something. And then we'd walk across the street to the fucking Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, Dude, fucking, you know, <laughs> yeah. four, 14 and shit. The side of the 7-Eleven, uh, that's where we'd, like, smoke cigarettes and just bullshit. And then you go up to Memorial Park where uh, people would smoke pot and yeah. just, Bad like, things sit around, hang park. out. Yeah, mm-hmm. fucking fights. And, yeah, it's, it's high school outside of high school, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And we were talking about uh, the 90s, it being like, uh, you know, a, sort of a time capsule. Yeah. And you mentioned when watching this, it's like, oh, fuck, I miss a video stores. I do. I Yeah. That's pretty much all I did at college. Yeah. Was go to family video. They still tried to fucking send me emails about a, about a late charge. Are you kidding? Your business. <laughs> you went out of business. I've I'm seen not... a family video in Wisconsin literally yeah. last week. There was a oh, bunch yeah? in the South. Yeah. Fa- family video holding on strong. I think I thought they went out of business. Maybe that's my right? own ego. If I move, everything's, everything's closed. Gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Blinders on. <laughs> no, but yeah, I used to just go there and fucking peruse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. There's so many options. When I was a kid, I loved the fact that it was a video store, and then there was the porno one with the uh, in, saloon in doors. The back, yeah. For some reason, it was always saloon yeah. doors. I was like, if I could only get back there for a second, man. <laughs> oh my god, I learned so I much, learned so much back oh, there. Man. I know what's back there. There was a video store two blocks away from where I grew up that that we had a fucking account because oh, we were there so much. And all we had to do, like if we'd rent an R because we were still like 13, mm-hmm. I'd have to just call my mom and she'd be like, yeah, do it. But it was only if it was a uh, true story or reflected real life. What is reflected real what? life? Boys in the Hood. I can get that. Okay. Because okay. that's – I could watch uh, – I watched – Clockwork Orange. I feel like that covers all the cool things. But you couldn't watch like horror movies. Yeah, if it was just like uh, fuck around sex time. Yeah. Fuck around slasher like, porn. Yeah, like slasher meat, porn. meatballs you couldn't watch. Yeah, that, <laughs> it was pretty much, I watched Clockwork Orange, Basketball Diaries, uh, just pretty much like <laughs> things to make me think the world is shit. Yeah, your mom really is the anarchist <laughs> professor <laughs> that we know her to be, yeah. if that's what she let you watch. Yeah, and then a fucking Hollywood video showed up, uh, like the like a few blocks uh, the other way, and they had a cult classic section. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Was like, the best thing. And it, I think it's like something that's kind of gone is picking stuff based on the cover, like shit you never heard oh, of. Oh yeah, like, totally. What the fuck is this? So I yeah. watched Twin Peaks. <laughs> okay, totally. Here we are. Yeah. And then you didn't have people behind the counter who like you know like Randall. Who's no, obsessed no one with ever movies? Spit in my face at the family. Video. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but still, it was like almost like the cool record store clerk guy who thinks who knows too much, but his only gig is working behind the counter. Yeah, but he thinks he's better than you because he you know, has seen everything. Mm-hmm. Well, I think comparing the uh, the video store, the video rental store to a record store is very similar. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like he was going to go and get your entertainment for however long and learn about some new things or visit something you already like. And fucking hey, dude! Like I spent so much time and so much money. Mm-hmm. At those damn places, late fees, Jesus. They're still yeah. trying to get me. Good luck, family. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I don't understand the the uh, breaks that has like everything is named, mm-hmm. like all the thing of it's a black and it's just title screens with. The, and why they were, did they do they that? Was that a of, reference or they were kind of like? Uh, 
I, I really don't want to use the word that I want to use. Pretentious? But, yeah, yeah, thank you. Because yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It seems big, like art they school. Big words. They're big words. It seems like an art school reference I that guess. I didn't get. It was like, oh, this is an homage to some she, some film, like Fellini or something that I don't know yeah. fuck about. It was they like were... catharsis was one of yeah. them. Yeah, syntax. Syntax. And it's it's like, like you're making hermaphrodite that's... jokes. Do you know what that is? Pump the brakes. That's yeah. the heavy-handed <laughs> premise. Yes, yeah. like, exactly. I, I'll know that this is supposed to be the cathartic scene. I'll yeah. know it. Yeah. yeah, You don't have to tell me. <laughs> exactly. You're totally it's, right. <laughs> it's foreshadowing, but you can only know that if you've already seen the movie. Mm-hmm. Like when the when the man goes in and asks for the magazines, the yeah. toilet paper, and then he dies with a boner. Like that one's called Harbinger, as in like a sign yeah. of things to come. But it's like yeah. you're like putting trying to put the tasty, the the avant garde into yeah. a fucking boner joke. Yeah, it's like, not a fucking art on. film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not an art movie. Wait, yeah, that just so sh- he was dead the whole time. Caitlin, right? Mm-hmm. Caitlin was was yeah. fucking him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how did how did she know he was done? Maybe she, she got away. hers. She I guess. got hers. She got maybe. hers, and then She's she a was selfish done. Selfish lover. Yeah. 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 I mean, she thought that he was just laying there. So who knows? Yeah. I don't know. That's. Don't know. It's behind closed doors. We'll never know what happened in there. But yeah. she seemed to enjoy. That was it. the coolest part of the movie. Is how the lights shut off at five fourteen every day, and they, <laughs> no one knows why. I'm I obsessed thought, with that. I thought he was <laughs> fucking with her. I didn't think okay. that was real. Okay. Because I thought he... No, it had to be real. The lights were off, mm-hmm. right? Unless he... You know, I thought he was just joking. I assumed they were always off, and he was just giving a bullshit explanation because he's a bullshit king. I like that, though. Yeah. Either way, Either it's way. super interesting. Either way, every single thing that happened in the movie was, like, upset, like, ridiculously, like, yeah. oh, how how curious. <laughs> you mean to tell me these, like, guys are all trying to play hockey? I'm jumping around. Yeah. That's fine. Bring your right? jump ropes. I'm jumping around. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. It's um, double Dutch. But, like, uh, like... You know, this fucking dickhead comes up on the roof. It's a bunch of hockey players, right? Yeah. Yeah. He fucking shoots their ball off the roof. They're like, well, I guess the game's over. Yeah. Right? They're throwing his ass off the roof. Seriously. I know, right? I feel like that's what it makes sense is like the personality of Dante didn't fit a dude who loves hockey. Yeah. In Jersey. Yeah. For sure. You can't root for Dante in this movie. No, He's totally. He's the Canyon biggest pushover. He's a for. fucking jellyfish. Uh, Veronica. I'll root for Veronica. She's the best character in the she whole is. movie. She is. Yeah. She is. She uh, actually cares about Dante. She does mm-hmm. nice things for him. And uh, he treats her like shit. She uh, brought him lasagna. Yeah, he's yeah. like blatantly out in the open talking about other girls to people. It's like, mm-hmm. what did you do? She moved here for you, you dickhead? Yeah. Come on. Oh, wow. And he, she's the only character you're like, yeah, I can fucking hang out. Randall's funny. Mm-hmm. And Randall has great timing. Can't act. Great, great timing. Act, but great timing. Great knows timing. how to drop a line somehow. Yeah. Well, what's the, what's the, my girlfriend sucked 37 dicks in a row? <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, that. Did Randall say that? No, no it was somebody it who was buying Oh, huggies. yeah. And then uh, he goes out of the convenience store and he's like, try not to suck any dick on your way to class. And that guy's like. Well, that's my cue. He just follows. That's it. the thing. So many parts of this movie have been quoted from mm-hmm. my age, probably fourteen to twenty, yeah. with my ho- hometown buds just quoting this movie. It's lines like that are so quotable for a teenage boy. Yeah, oh yeah. I think. I mean, for the most part, when you're at that age, you just speak in quotes. Totally. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how you define your friendship mm-hmm. is like movie quotes. Yeah, I still I still catch myself talking in quotes sometimes to people. Who, that I realize in the middle of saying it, they just don't. They're not going to get it. Yeah, I mean the only person because you would gave it no Francis. context. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, do you, you remember in fucking Teen Wolf when uh, you know uh, <laughs> Style says this? Style. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't. I, I don't. don't I'm, I'm in. I'm in my twenties, and I never hung out with you. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. But so, do you think then? I feel like did this in uh, film, like having this sort of DIY thing, like mm-hmm. Kevin Smith, you know, maxed out his credit cards to pay for this whole thing, ended up being a blockbuster movie, ended up being, like, I feel like, did this open the world for independent filmmaking? Like, all of a sudden, people are like, oh, this idiot can do it, I can do it. Uh, I don't know a lot about film, unfortunately, in terms of, like, the behind the scenes of, after this, what came, but... I, I could see that this, and I'm going to speak uh, hyperbolically, like, in a big That's way. all I do. People mm-hmm. just—I uh, just got yelled at for it by someone. What was do you this want me to do? talking about Chuck Roast type of <laughs> <laughs> but, 
<laughs> I think it's sort of like the Ramones, where it's like, hey, like they're playing something I've never heard before, and mm-hmm. they're doing it in not such a great way. Yeah, you know, it's the, accessible. I, I can do this. Mm-hmm. You know, this is something that I can, put, you know, put some work in and actually get decent at. I, with all that being said, I don't know if I mean he he did it, but there's a million people who didn't do it. So I don't mm-hmm. know if he's so much like, uh, kind of like the, the guy who unlocked the door to an avenue of what you can do. As you know, just he. I mean, it seems to me he might have just got lucky. I think so. It's probably a time and a place thing. Yeah, yeah it just for him happened, to get lucky. You know, yeah. I, it's fucking nineteen nineties oh, teenagers. I feel like such a critic. I have. I maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I felt so bad after I said that. Why? Because then, then, then you know, it's like, if I would I say that to him. If he was sitting here, would I be like, sir, I think your movies are garbage, and you just got lucky. That's not so <laughs> yeah. harsh, right? Totally. That's but not super harsh. I mean, I wouldn't I say really it to his face it. either, and also he wouldn't listen to us. Sure. Yeah. He walks around wearing a hockey jersey every day. No one can tell him <laughs> what to do, obviously. I don't yeah. mean that. Like, uh, I don't mean that he just got lucky. His whole career is based off luck, but I think like uh, to put the title of like the guy who started the indie movement on him is not totally fair. I mean he also didn't obviously didn't plan on that yeah, he didn't exactly. plan on any of this happening no but that's how it how it goes uh, yeah yeah I, I don't think he started the indie movement I think he just made it visible to a lot of people who never gave a shit yeah which yeah. is cool I mean, as fuck yeah totally. and I, I think that the reason why this is something that this means a lot to Goodershine because this encapsulate like that we were talking about the teenage experience yeah especially in the 90s it's very similar just bullshit and waiting around mm-hmm. and needless yeah. I mean this is a different version of high fidelity basically yeah it's yeah. like everyone in the movie relies on what they like to what what they consume what they like like what that's m- a movies movie. mm-hmm. and well yeah like what they are into mm-hmm. defines who they are basically yeah. yeah it's just not as innately focused on it yeah for sure so, okay, after all this, like after watching the movie, talking about it for a spell, about an hour, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, We've been talking for an hour? 45 minutes. 45 minutes around there, yeah. Like, hey, when you're having fun with friends, it's like, yeah, where's the time going? When go? you're jumping around, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't uh, fucking stay true to this just linear story. I wonder if that has anything to do with me. No, I'm, I was. We're joking because this is a linear. Oh, okay, okay, no okay, actual okay. linear story. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's linear, but it's like it's not real, uh, like an arc. It's just of an a excuse story. for like you know weird anecdotes about my cousin sucked his own dick and died. You know, it's, like half of these half of these scenes. A lot of could callbacks. Be, yeah, a lot. Too, yeah. That is the one thing I noticed is that he has all this all these. Uh, pieces of information in that world. Everyone talks about the same stuff. When the coroner comes back and reference, yeah. yeah, totally. Which is is I think is great. That's like yeah. A, yeah. that's a sign of a good, a good, yeah, you know, a storyteller who can have all this stuff to work with, but still bad acting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Half these scenes could be fucking stand up comedy bits. Totally, yeah. independent contractors on the Death Star. Mm-hmm. That's you know, yeah, yeah, that is totally. Or fucking sucking your own dick, whatever, in the car. Mm. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Star Wars, labor, dick sucking. That's all. That's, it's all. It's all there. Comedy. Most it's all open there. mics. You, yeah, you host an open mic. You see this these type of jokes every week. <laughs> I do, man. <laughs> these I guys do. getting up there. I don't know if that means I'm not a good comic, but I'm not tired of them yet. I like to see all the shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, good for you. Like when, yeah. I, when I when I when, when I see like comics I respect in that basement at Lottie's watching someone. Yeah, a struggle, we'll mm-hmm. say. And I look at their face, and they'll give me a look like, oh, my God. Like, they, they, they mm-hmm. look grizzled. Yeah. And I'm like, look, isn't this fun? Look at he's trying. He's walking on thin ice. Yeah. You no, know? I do like that. I think it's still fun. It's still, yeah. It is still fun. And I think, I guess, sometimes maybe even the, oh, look at this, is still like, well, at least I'm watching it. And yeah. yeah. I don't know. But I, I do like that. I can't imagine being, anytime I've hosted open mics, at a certain point, I'm just like, Oh god! Yeah, this needs to, <laughs> I need to go away. Unless I, I, I don't get like that. Unless I have to Good work the next day, the next morning. Yeah, I'll be like, get me the fuck out. I've of I've always there. had to work. You know, the that next blows, morning. I've yeah. always had nine to five type things. So yeah. like, I don't want to stay up till two in the morning listening exactly. to you talk about ass fisting or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think that bit. makes. I think that makes you an optimist more than anything. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm having a good time. Positive mental attitude. I mean, I'm I, don't get me wrong. I love the. Insane things people say. Sometimes I laugh super hard. It oh, just, it's so fun. The way yeah. people start premises sometimes makes me laugh yeah. more than anything. <laughs> uh, I don't know who it was. Someone at some one mic said like, 
you guys ever think about having murder for a job? Like, that sentence didn't get anything except me losing it. I'm like, it who should've. says that? It That's insane. It's a great premise. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great premise. It's a great premise. <laughs> murder for a job. Yeah. Murder people job. do. People yeah, have People it. do have a, you know? Uh, Gross some, Point Blank. That's a great movie. Hitmen, great movie. Soldiers. Um, Zach, were you leading up to something? We were talking here for an hour. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And... It doesn't sound like you liked it. Who me? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think we liked it, Zach, and we we the one that made him watch it. I think it's hard for me to separate my own nostalgia mm-hmm. from like you how I still like love it. bad things if you loved them at one like, time. Yeah, the the totally. movie dragged. Uh, I mean, it wasn't as fun as I remember it, but I've seen it so many fucking times. But still, when Olaf sings Berserker, I st- fucking get so happy. I, yeah. I was you know. thinking during the movie, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh man, I'm the wrong age." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. If totally. I if I had if I had like made that choice where I was like, "No, nah, it's not too much work to watch four movies and get on board with mm-hmm. the Kevin, yeah. you know, universe." I, I, if I was, f- you know, fifteen, I probably would have been like, "Dude, classic." Yeah, and it, yeah. It's, it, it's it's yeah. regarded as a classic. Mm-hmm. I don't know, dude. It's I'm true. St- I'm still gonna like watch Clerks chasing Amy and Mallrats, and I'm still gonna enjoy them. And I'm, I'm gonna be aware that they're not very good movies, mm-hmm. you know, and they're not smart humor. But still, like, there's just a part of me that you know, it's the nostalgia. It's bullshit. I, uh, but I yeah. wanted to do karate when I was a kid. Yeah, took up took a couple classes. Decided I could teach myself. Right. Sure, DIY karate without YouTube, of exactly. course. Yeah. As if you should learn with YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> but just just started watching movies, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ver- <laughs> like the Karate Kid, <laughs> like the Karate Kid, of course. But the one that really hit home was Rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, if we'd have watched this, the two of you would have been like, "Holy fuck!" And I'd have been sitting Indian style, smiling at the TV. Yeah. <laughs> just it's so still, it, it still fucking makes me so happy. Yeah, Dude, it's. The the fight scenes on it are ph- phenomenal. It's fin- it's insane. But the actual dialogue and story. Do you know he did like half of that movie, like the stunts? He like the, the first month of shooting broke his left foot, like totally, like really? fucked it up. Jackie wow. Chan, dude, he fucking water skis, no skis, his feet. <laughs> <laughs> he water skis with just that. his feet. That's One amazing. of his fucking ankles is shattered. Wow. The guy's a monster. Yeah, he really is. That's amazing. Jackie Chan's a monster. Yeah, so, he is a monster. And it, it, what I'm saying is I get, like, still watching that stuff and being like, oh, I love this, even yeah. though you know it's not good. And yeah. it's, it's just a tie to a feeling. You it's know. a tie totally. to a feeling. I, I, the first time I watched Mall Rats was at a birthday party. Oh, fuck. I mean, right. the setup is there. Yeah, yeah. it was. The fix totally. is in. Mm-hmm. Mall Rats and Goodfellas in the same night. Oh, boy. Yeah, I know you're a Goodfellas Ooh, fan. Oh, boy. And then, and then. Oh, boy. And then we fucking played it with a Ouija board and claimed to. Uh, to reach Lay- Ray Liotta's character, Henry Hill? Yeah. yeah, Henry Hill. He wasn't even dead at exactly. The time. <laughs> <laughs> We're fucking idiot kids. We don't know. We're like, oh, the mob must have got him. No, yeah. he was living in Norfolk selling fucking meth. The newspaper that Henry uh, that Ray Liotta picks up yeah. at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. the Vindicator, Youngstown's paper. Oh yeah, tribute because it happened from in, Marty nice. in Pittsburgh, right? It was right there. He had a Pittsburgh connection. That's, That's he... how he got in trouble with the drugs. With the drugs, yeah. yeah. The Pittsburgh connection. Yeah, they found him in Nebraska selling meth, and they had to relocate him again. Man. I mean, th- people do what they do. We, whatever you're born to do, that's <laughs> yeah. what you do. Yeah. You just yeah. find a way. And ever since he can remember, he always wanted to be <laughs> <laughs> a monster. I, what's, what was, have you seen the AFI video? Exactly. Yeah. I saw that video before I saw Goodfellas, so I didn't know what it was a reference to. I was just like, why are they bloody by a car? This doesn't make yeah. any sense. No, I never yeah. saw that video, but I did see a little scrappy video <laughs> that before I saw Training Day. And I was like, wow, this, this video is pretty like good. Movie. Was it a reference to Training Day the whole the way? The whole through? thing is the uh, plot. It's like the plot of Training Day. But Lil Scrappy's down there. down to four minutes and yeah. with a crunk beat on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime you can turn to someone and say, if you don't smoke this, we have a problem. That's yeah. pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, I could talk about Goodfellas for a while as well. I ch- a- I'm, I'm literally, there's blood in my mouth. I'm biting my tongue. <laughs> yeah. It's a great, the best part of the movie. I'm just going to say it right now. Please it's say it. When he's, trying to, when he's trying to explain the, the painting uh, to his mother. Like, I like this painting. This dog's like, hey, look it over there. This dog's like, what do you want from me? One dog goes west. <laughs> one dog goes west. One dog goes east. This, dog, <laughs> this guy's like, hey, what do you want from me? Yeah. De Niro's like, looks like somebody we know. <laughs> that, that old lady? Yeah. Scorsese's real mom. Hey, really? There you go. 
I wonder how she got the gig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glad she got a call back. Uh, <laughs> God, I fucking love Goodfellas. <laughs> yeah. We got to find somebody who hasn't seen Goodfellas so we can talk about oh, it. Oh, yeah, exactly. I should have lied. I should have lied. <laughs> oh, you would have been obvious. I wanted to lie about so many of the movies I mean, on the list. Well, they're, they're, they're classic movies, you know? So many they're good of them. movies. I'm excited. Like, I put stuff on there. I was like, oh, I want to watch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I, that's why I put The Shining on there. I was like, I haven't watched The Shining fucking forever. I'll yeah. watch The Shining. Definitely. Uh, Goodwill well, Hunting? Well, we should, mm-hmm. we should wrap oh, this I'd up. I slaughter that episode. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited that's for someone to watch that. Did. Nothing. I interrupted when I did, and I'm just sorry to talk. I said we should wrap it up, and then I. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It. yeah. How you like them apples? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Michael Timlin, thank you for being with us. Yeah, uh, great. Really thank appreciate you. Yeah. it. Uh, follow uh, Michael on Twitter at please. Cowboy Timlin. Yeah, please do. Give him do one it. Throw them. Throw him some follows. He he earned it. A bunch of follows. <laughs> yeah. All the follows he got. All right. Well, one thing uh, left to do is to see what Francis thinks. Take it away, Francis. <laughs> All right, this is Francis Rowe coming in talking about Clerks. Oh, shit. Fucking Clerks. Um, I'll give it three stars. The reason why I'm giving it three stars is because fucking Randall annoys the ever-loving shit out of me. He may be, like, everyone's favorite character or everything like that, but mm-hmm. guy fucking bothers me. It's like, oh, I fucking get you work in a fucking video store. But anyways, cool part I like about Clerks is, like, the quintessential, like, one of the most, like, original, like, indie films. It's, it's totally black and white. You know, you had the fucking origin of, you know, fucking um, James Allen Bob and uh, the six <laughs> cancer merchants. Yeah, that shit's funny. Set up everything for, like, the kind of things that Kevin Smith was doing. I dug that. But, you know, there I, – I don't know, like – I don't know. This movie's kind of a hard one to fucking discuss because I, I love it, but I hate it at the same time just because it's like I've seen it a million fucking times. There's parts of the movie that I think are funny that, like, I don't think, like, anyone else might think it's funny, like, where he's, like, in the closet in the beginning and he just goes, I'm fucking tired. And, like, that part cracks me up for some reason. But I'm, um, you know, I totally know how it is to stand outside of a fucking 7-Eleven, Zach and I used to stand outside of 7-Eleven and, like, try to get people to buy cigarettes and shit, but, you know, I love that movie, but I fucking hate Randall. I like how it's got a total set-up connection of, you know, like, um, Rick Darris and, you know, like, Julie, you know, I, I think it, her name is Julie Dwyer, the one that, like, you know, died in the pool and all that shit is all set up for Mallrats and for all, you know, Chasing Amy and, like, everyone that connected through high school in Jersey. I fucking love that shit. Um, um, what else to say about it? Um, I don't know. It's fucking tight and fucking black and white. Fuck you guys, I'm out.